fast. What I often notice is the tips are certain locks that have like really thin spots. I wanna, I'll wanna, i probably find one for you guys later. But there are locks on the tips that have really thin spots. And what I've noticed over time is that there are some inconsistencies with the lock. Good YouTube, TP Locks here bringing you guys another video. Yes, today I wanna to talk to you guys about some things that I wish I knew before getting locks, okay? If you're interested in that video, stay tuned. Per usual, you guys, if you have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button right now. In addition to hitting that subscribe button, definitely wanna make sure you hit that like and that notification bell on the side to make sure you stay notified on all the posts the moment I post, all right? Let's get into the video. Today with this video, you guys, I wanted to talk about some of the things I wish I knew before getting locks, okay? It's not a lot of things, there's no regret. I know my thumbnail might have made me look a little sad, but that's not the case, okay? It's just a little clickbait, you know what I'm saying? If you click the video, I got your ass, all right? <laughs> While I do love my locks, trust me, I adore my locks, there are some things I wish I would have known that probably could have been formed a little, few different better decisions, okay? First one is, I wish I would have known the importance of part to lock ratios, part systems, just anything with parts. Like most of you guys, when I thought about getting locks, I just thought to Google, put in locticians near me, pretty much just did a Google, found the nearest loctician and went into the salon. That's about it. Of course, I looked at the portfolio and established the portfolio, but I really had no idea what to expect and really what to instruct my loctician when I went in there. Over time, what I've learned when it comes to part to lock ratio and really part systems is they really play a huge role in how your locks develop over time. If your loctician doesn't understand part to lock ratio, if your loctician doesn't understand how to properly space your parts, it could really set you up for failure down the line. You could deal with thinning locks, locks that are not really built structurally to be able to support a long journey. You end up having to combine locks at the root. A whole bunch of things could go wrong by just not cultivating the right parts in the beginning. It is really truly your foundation. Secondly, with part styles. I went into the loctician, all I really asked for was medium thickness locks and that was about it, right? If I would have done a little bit more research on part styles, I probably would have picked diamond parts. Now the reason why this is important is because anytime you get a retwist, a lot of us complain of that scalpy look. We hate the scalpy look. But when you've got diamond shaped parts or whatever shaped parts that you like, it can really change how you feel, your perception of that twisted look. And I feel like diamond parts, I mean, they're just, they're just dope. I mean, honestly, I probably would have done diamond parts if I could in the past, right? But that's not a regret. I love my locks. But that is thing number one. I wish I would have done a little bit more research on part to lock ratio and how it really impacts my life. Thing number two, thing number two. Now this is probably gonna be the most controversial reason in the bunch, right? This is gonna be probably the one that people are gonna be like, bro, you're tripping, bro. Why, why would you change that? Leaching and dyeing my hair, it really wasn't worth it. It really wasn't worth it. And, and not to say that I don't love the color. Y'all see this right now. Y'all see me out here. This right here looks fly, it's clean. You know what I'm saying? You really, who would complain about something like that? What people don't understand is anytime you're stripping your hair, bleaching it, or even trying to touch up your hair, you are structurally changing it. You are stripping your hair. You are making it weaker. You can condition it. You can do all the things you want to do. It still does compromise your hair to a certain extent. And over time, what I've experienced in my journey, I've been in my journey about three years and some change. I lose count. I've been in the journey about three years and some change, and I feel the difference. To be honest with you, the hair at the tips are significantly weaker. And quite frankly, I do wish that my hair just top to bottom was as strong as it could be, right? When you've got locks and you plan to have a very, very long journey, you don't want any part of your locks compromised, even a little bit. Just because you can bleach your hair and you can get away with it, doesn't mean that it won't cause problems down the line. When I first started bleaching and doing all this stuff to dye my hair, I just thought, oh, okay, it's cool. But now three years later, I'm starting to see, wow, this hair feels different. It doesn't feel as strong. It doesn't feel as resilient. It feels more fragile. It feels more dry. As a person that's moved and transitioned to a more holistic lifestyle, I can honestly say that I wish my hair embodied a little bit more of that. I wish that my hair, I could say that my hair was 100% pure, raw, organic, and vegan free, animal cruelty free. But I have absolutely torched these things with chemicals to get this look. I look at my locks as a testament to my journey, the mistakes, the goods, the bads, whatever. And it has, you know, panned out pretty well for me. But there are some times where I wish I had a nice solid color. I had a 
full, just healthy hair. I didn't really have to worry about, or I didn't have to make sure that I spent extra attention maintaining. So I would say for any of you guys that are considering bleaching, you could definitely do it. But if you do plan on having a longer journey, it's possible. It's possible that you could have some instability later on down the line. I haven't had any locks or anything fall out quite yet, but I have felt like in the past that my hair feels a little too brittle for comfort at the tips at times, all right? But that is thing number two. Number three, I wish I would have more strongly considered thick locks in my lock journey. When I originally started my lock journey, I was so overwhelmed by the pressures and the perceptions I feel like of just Eurocentric standards of beauty, to be quite honest. I didn't really even have it in my mind to consider that a thicker lock could be a more aesthetically pleasing lock. I thought the thinner, more uniform, more cylindrical looking, non-freeform locks were just the more attractive looking locks. And I don't know if this was because I was trying to assimilate into a job at corporate America, or just because I genuinely felt this way. But as I grew a deeper understanding of locks, deeper appreciation for locks, I really did genuinely find that thicker locks are a little bit more my speed, bro. Like I've literally contemplated combining my locks, my current set of locks with a guy named Val Tough Cuts. not gonna do it though because what I've learned in my journey is the moment you think you need to alter something you alter something and then something messes up okay probably not gonna do it but at the end of the day I have grown a deeper appreciation for thicker locks I've also learned that they can be structurally a little stronger as well which also is like a huge for having thicker locks but for most of us that start locks we can be boggled down a little bit by you know societal pressures and eurocentric standards of beauty and i believe that was probably the case when i got my lock so i wish i really do wish that i would have strongly considered thicker ones because i probably wouldn't be contemplating calling up bow tough cuts right now um if i did earlier so I want to tell myself that it's not just a grass is greener mentality. Maybe it's just my desire for change. It could very well be that, but that's just where I'm at now. Okay. I'm, I'm being transparent with y'all. All right. I know y'all going to probably grill me in the comments, but this is what, what it is. Thing number four, you guys, this one is one that I learned almost the hard way. Okay. Now I didn't have a lock pop off. Like I've said several times throughout this video, but I have learned, especially with bleach damaged hair that styles, excessive styles, braid styles, Styles that specifically twist the hair upon itself with rubber bands at the ends can absolutely damage your hair. Barrel twists, I'm talking two strand twists, these can damage your hair, y'all. Anytime I get a two strand twist or any sort of style at this point, I am very much concerned about the tips of my hair. One, because they tend to be a little bit more brittle as is, but when you twist them upon each other and you literally let them set, anytime you see me do like a braid out or something like that, what I often notice is the tips are certain locks that have like really thin spots. I wanna, I'll probably find one for you guys later, but there are locks on the tips that have really thin spots. And what I've noticed over time is that there are some inconsistencies with the locks. This has also been confirmed by people like Chris McDread. Hey guys. Uh, my name is Chris McDread, and I want to tell you this. You may not know this, but the more you braid your hair, one, the thinner it becomes, two, the weaker it becomes. I look at my ends every time I braid, and I'm like, why did I even do it? My ends, like now, is it breaking off? I'm like, no, this is a weak point forming here because when you twist it, it tightens, and that tight point stretches out. It stretches out, and if so, if there was a weak bone, it stretches out a little bit more. And every time you, 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 you braid, it stretches out a little bit more. And so, I would suggest you keep braiding and uh, too much styling to be like your look at that, to be like your tuxedo or your Sunday bed. So keep your styling. Look at that. Keep your style. Look at that. I'm already losing. That. You see that? Keep your see that? See that? Just because I braid it, stretch it out. Already. So keep them for the days uh, uh, that you're going somewhere. You mentioned cool. on his Instagram once that styles, braid styles, absolutely can cause this sort of thinning, which is why he recommends flexi rods. You'll see him on you'll see him on Instagram recommending flexi rods if you want to do like a curl out look or something like that. But styles, you guys, excessive styles, long term styles 
absolutely can cause damage to your lock. If I do do any, you know, braid styles, it's gonna only be on occasions, right? It's only gonna be at like weddings or really, really formal get-ups. It's gotta be occasional at this point because I do know that if I consistently do it, if I'm just rocking two strand twists just to rock them around the house, the likelihood is I'm probably gonna be damaging my locks. I'm probably gonna be losing one. I'm probably gonna lose a tip, something like that. So that's not what I wanna do. I'm glad I can inform you guys about that though because I, I, I learned that the hard way. But yeah, I, I wish I would've known that starting now. All right, that's reason number four. Now thing number five, the last and final things that I wish I would've known before getting locks, and I say this to you guys all the time, I wish I would've taken photos early, 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 early. I've said this in a bunch of different videos, you guys, but this one is one that I absolutely regret. When you get your locks initially, you are so excited and concerned at the same time. That's why videos and channels like these are so popular because you're looking for someone who can really hold your hand and let you know, hey, what you're going through is normal, what you're going through is okay, don't worry, chill out, it'll be okay. That's what you're looking for. Early on in my journey, I was so worried, I was so consumed in trying to look up other content to make me feel better that I didn't appreciate where I was myself. I didn't take pictures of my journey. Granted, it sounds ironic because I did a video almost every single week, almost since the very beginning of my journey. But as far as my own pictures, like I wish I would have been so passionate about the journey that I did time-lapse stuff. Like I saw Dreaded Fam, he did a time-lapse video where he took a picture, it looked like for almost every single day or every single week of his almost two year journey, I wanna say. I wish I would have done a little bit more to appreciate that early or those early phases in lock. When we get these locks, not only are we concerned about where we are at the moment, we're also really just looking forward. We're not really embracing the moment. We're thinking about the styles that we're gonna rock one day. We're thinking about the day we're gonna be able to get a pineapple. We're thinking about the day we're gonna be able to rock long two strand twist down our, our shoulders like Quavo. Gay, gay, That's what gay, we're thinking gay, about. Gay, but instead, we should really be embracing where our hair is at the moment, the art form that it is. Because I look back at old videos and, and really honestly, you guys, I do miss sometimes the swaggy, sort of sleek look of having, you know, dreads that were, you know, ear length. I know that sounds crazy, but I do. There's a charm to them, you know what I'm saying? There's a certain swag to them, you know? And granted, I can still cut them, to be honest with you, but I'm probably not gonna do that. I wanna let them grow. But I say to all you guys out there who are just starting your journey, understand that everything is gonna be okay. You can definitely utilize me as a resource to let you, you know, to, to confirm that, affirm that for you. Um, but at the end of the day, love where you are. Take plenty pictures, because I'm telling you, that is the shortest phase of locks you're going to have. If you plan on having a long journey, that starter lock to intermediate lock phase is going to be a blur. And when it goes by, you're gonna miss it. You're gonna miss it. I know you're worried about the frizz. I know you're worried about everything else, but trust me, that's such a short phase, bruh. Once it's gone, like, you're gonna wish you had appreciated a few more of those moments. And that's just my experience, okay? Let me not project that on you, right? But that's my five reasons. Obviously, you guys are gonna have five others. So if you have any reasons, definitely leave them in the comment section. I love to hear them. I love these videos to be a form to you know understand what you guys are going through, some of the things that you wish you would have known. I love to hear it. So leave a comment in the comment section, you guys, as well as like this video if it gave you some additional insight. I believe these videos are always gonna be beneficial to those of you guys just starting because as a person that's been in the lock journey for three years plus, who has made a community, built a community together with you guys, through locks, I think is extremely important to make sure that I'm sharing and I'm transparent. So the people that are just starting this know exactly what they're getting themselves into. All right, this has been TP Locks. Signing What's going out. on, TP Locks fam? I go by the name of Backpack Beats. If you enjoy the music and all the beats on my man TP's channel, make sure you show some love over to my channel also. I'm there two days a week. Every Monday, we're making beats. And every Thursday, I DJ the No More Free Beat Show, showing love to everything underground. So if you like music, if you like beats, or if you like dope vibes, definitely check my channel out. It's real dope. Big shouts out to my man TP for giving me the platform, and we out. Appreciate it.